I wasn't going to make a video today. It's probably going to hold off till next week, but I've seen in these spheres over the last few days, namely on Telegram, Europeans and American Native Europeans going at each other, you could say. And I suppose that this stems from the recent uh, Nord Stream uh, sabotage that happened. And you know, I don't really like talking much about my current thing. I try to avoid current events as much as I can, but sometimes it's just, I guess, pressing. This video is going to be a rambling one. I really don't have a plan for what all I'm going to say. I've got a rough plan, but usually I plan these things out to myself over a period of a few days. This is just off the cuff. It's going to be rambling. Some people may not like what I have to say. Oh well. If you're coming here for some hot takes, you ain't going to get them. Tepid takes. That's all we got. And if you don't like it, you can go elsewhere. It doesn't bother me. But I'm going to try to give you my thoughts on what I call the American question, or the title of this video, the Ameriquan question. This is something I've thought about a lot over a period of time. And it seems to have been shoved to the forefront in these circles the last several days. So what better time than now to uh, give you a, an Appalachian's perspective on the Ameriquan question. A hillbilly's perspective, you could say. The American question. Myself, I have mixed feelings, and I have to say most of them are a negative regarding Ameriqua. You know, but first off, let me give a little background about myself. I've never traveled abroad, never been out of the country, never been overseas, never been to Europe or anywhere. In fact, I've never left the American South. And, to be honest, I rarely leave Appalachia nowadays. I have wanted to travel abroad before. Daydreams of traveling to Norway, Denmark, England, Scotland. I'd like to see the Balkans as well, because there are some beautiful places there, but the First several countries I listed off are the countries of my ancestry, you could say. But if I was to travel to Europe, I would have no wish to see London, Oslo, Copenhagen, Glasgow. I want to see the rural areas of those respective countries. But to be honest, my time for travel, I believe, has passed. And I probably never will get to. And I'm fine with that, because I love Appalachia, and I hate to leave the haulers anymore, to be honest. But the American question is a complex sort of question. Like I said, I have mixed feelings. Most of them are negative. However, I must acknowledge that America is all that I know. As I said, I've never traveled anywhere anywhere else. And I think my friend Pat, he came up with the best term to describe America. And he describes it as a Judeo Freemasonic shopping mall. Judeo because of, well, Zog. And even here in Appalachia, unfortunately, and the American South, 
you don't know how many times in my life I grown when I was growing up I would hear people say that Israel was God's chosen country and they are God's chosen people evangelistic uh, Christianity for you I suppose but you know Freemasonic due to a lot of the uh, Freemasonic imagery and influence in the founding of this country and a shopping mall due to the vapid standardization and consumerist culture that we bear with here in Ameriqua Judeo Freemasonic shopping mall I believe America was an experiment originally an experiment based on enlightenment ideals it was uh, and I will say this I think the experiment is failing I have a very bleak outlook for the prospects of this country in the next 20 10 20 30 years I think things are going to deteriorate quite considerably I believe Ameriqua is going to resemble a third world country such as what you would see in Central America or South America. I don't want to get too sidetracked there, but I don't think I've seen the videos of the Muslims calling Ameriqua the Great Satan. And honestly, I do not disagree with them in the least. Our culture has been exported en masse this Judeo-Freemasonic shopping mall culture has been exported en masse everywhere across the world. And I don't blame Europeans for feeling resentful for this. Not in the least. Not in the least. You know, I see a lot of memes and I've read a lot of arguments from people that are European regarding America lately. The Mutt meme. The, uh, a lot of the other posts I've seen, there is some truth to it. I admit it. You know, I have no love really for Ameriqua. I have no love, only contempt and hatred for Zog that we labor under, that we've labored under for much longer than I've ever been alive. Long time. I have no love for it. No love at all. And I think it's wrong, though, for some of these Europeans to castigate a lot of us uh, white Americans for the situation. At least in this side of things, you know. I've said before, you know, there's a lot of problems with American whites. I mean, I think I heard that it was that academic agent guy that was saying that, you know, white Americans are just as bad as, well, the you-know-whos. Once again, the mystery meat fascist or dissident strikes again. Isn't that guy like half Pakistani or some shit? I don't know. I don't know. Don't really care. I'm just bewildered. I find myself increasingly bewildered sometimes with this shit that we are in today. It's just an absolute shit show sometimes. Anyways, there is some truth, though, like I said, to Europeans' arguments. I believe it was the Norwegian writer, Knut Hamsun. I could be wrong about this, and correct me if I am, but I believe it was him that said many, many decades ago that America was a mulatto stud farm. And unfortunately, this is true. Here in Appalachia, I'm from the northeast corner of Tennessee, high in southern Appalachia. Up there, the county that I'm from is 99.5, 99.4% white. Race mixing was seen extremely seldom up there. It happens. Very, very rare. I could the little village I am from, it even happens there, but I can count on one hand the incidences of it that I have witnessed in my lifetime. It's a very rare thing. Four years ago, 
here in a couple of weeks, it'll have been four years, I moved to Southeast Tennessee. And I work driving a truck in Northwestern Georgia. Northwest corner, roughly. You could consider this Southern Appalachia, extreme Southern Appalachia, which I guess, you know, I guess you could consider it because the land is uh, rolling, rolling hills. They grow cotton there in this county. But you wouldn't believe in my line of work when I see families and this and that out at stores. It seems like every white parent, and it's not a big town where I work at predominantly. I also go to other areas though. It's kind of rural. They grow cotton there. Um, kind of rugged, but nowhere near, nowhere near as rugged as it is back home where I'm from. You wouldn't believe how many white boomer grandparents I see in stores or wherever running their errands with one or two kinky-haired mulatto grandchildren. Some of these are people that I really wouldn't expect that this would have happened from. You know, these grandparents have probably been conned into raising these mulatto grandchildren for whatever reason, whatever uh, problems that the parent may have. So unfortunately, Canute Hampson, I don't think he's wrong, necessarily. Plus, if you read about some of the things that happened, I believe, in Savannah, Georgia, and uh, Providence, Rhode Island, before the American Revolution. Two of these spots were hot spots in the slave trade, what, from what I uh, understand. And, uh, yeah. So I don't think Mr. Hamson was all that off in his assessment. It's unfortunate, but it seems to be the case in some ways, unfortunately. The American question. But you know, too, I see people that are Americans criticizing the Europeans for giving up their guns. I do think that this was a tremendous mistake on their part, allowing themselves to be coerced in such a fashion. But I often see Americans say, oh, they have no chance of rising up or revolution. This is a folly, I think, from our side. Just look at some historical examples. If you study the years of lead in Italy, the Nuclei Armati Revoluzionari, which is my favorite uh, faction from the time of the years of lead. I'm going to make a video talking, going in depth about them here soon. Uh, Nuclei Armati Revoluzionari translates basically to Cellular Armed Revolution. The Ordine Nuovo, hell, even the Red Brigades, these people, these factions, it was like the Wild West. I don't know specifically what the gun laws are in Italy, but I would imagine that they are more stringent than what they are here in the United States. And I think it's wrong for Americans to say that they have never rose up or done revolution. However, to be fair, I do hear Europeans saying that Americans are armed to the teeth and never do anything. There is some truth to this, but you look historically. The most American thing I believe to do is to revolt. American Revolution. Shortly after the American Revolution, we had the Whiskey Rebellion, Northern Appalachia, Adirondacks, I believe. I'd have to look into it again. Uh, Shays Rebellion. You know, that's what I admire the most about Appalachia and the Appalachian people. The Scots-Irish, the Ulster Scots, Germans, the Anglos that settled this area. Born fighting. They've always had a disdain and distrust for authority. You know, I think the most American thing to do is to revolt. You know, a lot of people talk about, a lot of these leftists, mainstream leftists and such, cry about my insurrection. Personally, myself, the insurrection, of course, that happened on January the 6th, 
I think it should have been an actual insurrection. I think they should have went much further. But these people that carried this out were conservatives, of course. They are only interested in conserving. And they still have a love of Ameriqua, you could say. But anyways, the most American thing to do is revolt, in my opinion. But I think Europeans forget that there were a few men, at least here in American white nationalism, who did revolt. They all met sticky ends, you could say. I think of the, the Order, Robert J. Matthews, David Lane. I think of Eric Rudolph. I think of Ruby Ridge. It does happen, but it is isolated. Unfortunately, it is isolated. I knew I'd forget something, uh, so let me add this real quick. It's just part and parcel of doing this thing off the top of my head. But um, I think why we see a lot of this sort of degeneracy promoted, uh, this uh, vapid consumer culture, um, and also, you know, think of your uh, sports ball leagues, you know, NFL, the NCAA, or the NBA, whatever. One reason why, and Hollywood, another, another example, um, Hollywood, uh, I think the reason that we see a lot of this shit originating here in America is because we have a population that is armed to the teeth. Well, some, some of the population. Our population has the ability for extreme violence. And that is why I think we see a lot of this shit originate here. You know, billions of dollars are spent each year on bread and circuses to keep white Americans from seeing the reality of the situation. Billions. I think that is one of the reasons why we see a lot of this shit. And that's another problem with America. Sometimes I hear people on this side of things saying, you know, white unity. I don't know if it's even possible to unite whites on a grand scale in this country at the current state of things. Whites in this country seem to be a lot more individualistic. They see themselves sometimes narcissistically. They see their families, but overall, and I'm talking about the broader white population as a whole. A lot of them are self-hating. Just truly disgusting individuals. This is a problem in America. The atomization of people. You know, the culture in America. I'm going to make a video here next week or the week after talking about the different accents here in this country. I have a pretty thick one, I guess you could say, myself. Um, but you know, it's this standardization. I hate hearing what I call the generic American accent. It seems like it has no flavor. The dialect, it's undetectable where it is from. It's standardization. Standardization. Every small town in America, unless there is some sort of noteworthy geographical uh, layout or object in the town, they all look the fucking same. Dollar General, McDonald's, fucking Walmart, all this shit. Every fucking small town looks the same. Of course, this is, I guess, capitalism at its finest. Standardization. Profit. But yeah, the American question, you know, seems to be a hot topic lately. Let me go up here. I'll think if I've had anything I've forgotten to say. So lastly, what I see is possibly the only two 
redeeming qualities of Ameriqua. One being the regional characteristics of the different parts of Ameriqua. You know, rural areas such as here in Appalachia, the rural south, New England, the Midwest, Pacific Northwest. Seems like these areas tend to hold on to their culture a bit better than, you know, urban areas, cosmopolitan areas. But these cultures, of course, though, they are being quickly eroded. You see it in the South, like I mentioned earlier, race mixing, uh, the worship of my sports ball, football in the South. Here in Appalachia, to a lesser degree, much lesser degree, race mixing. But up here, drugs, methamphetamine, prescription opiates, heroin, fentanyl, all these things. Also, I've mentioned many times before, here in Appalachia, you have these NGOs, such as Concerned Appalachians, the Highlander Folk School, um, Hood to Holler up in Eastern Kentucky, um, lots of nefarious uh, NGOs pushing their globo homo propaganda, trying to push it here in the hollers. Like I said, these cultures are being quickly eroded and things, measures must be taken to protect ourselves from this. Now, the other redeeming quality is the Second Amendment. And I see a lot of people in these circles, they counter signal this for some fucking reason. I touched on this in the last video. It is the antithesis of everything to be Aryan if you do not arm yourself. I think dissidents, us white racialists, we should be armed to the teeth. Europeans, I know there's stringent gun laws over there, but I think the same should be uh, the same for you, you know. I'm not encouraging anyone to do anything illegal, but I do think we will see a time when legalities will need to be thrown out the window. That being said, it's one of the only two redeeming qualities I can think of Ameriqua. Historically, manifest destiny. I made this video here well over a year ago called Acquisition of the New Myth. It's one of my favorite videos I've made. I talked about Alfred Rosenberg's myth of the 20th century in this video. You know, the Germans, they had their myth, a strong myth, although it was ultimately vanquished, of course, by a worldwide coalition of, you know, the usual uh, sort of suspects, as Didymus would call them, you know, Judeo-finance, uh, Quaker fanaticism, all these things. But even so, their myth was strong and it was vibrant. And I think Ameriqua at one time had a myth that was comparable. It was the myth of Manifest Destiny. I speak about this in that video more at length. Manifest Destiny, you know, Conquest of the Continent, as Madison Grant named his book after. While this was happening, we had a wonderful and vibrant myth to live by. However, that myth has been accomplished, you could say. According to my friend Ronan, Manifest Destiny was supposed to go into Central and South America. We never completed it, you could say. But, as far as this country goes, we reached the Pacific. Once that was achieved, we have languished, I believe, ever since. We need a new myth. And to be honest, white Americans, whatever your European ancestry may be, we need a new myth. And I think that the only way that this myth can be achieved is through accelerationism. And I know accelerationism gets a bad name from some people in these circles. I understand. 
but it doesn't change my opinion. Accelerationism is really the only way forward. You know, that's like, you see a lot of these more politically minded groups in these circles. It seems like they just really want to conserve. They're not worried about the spiritual well-being of our race. They're really just racist conservatives. You know, I hate all these little different labels. You know, I hear racist liberal, racist conservative. I don't really fucking care. But it seems like that's what they are. They just want to conserve your lily white suburb. They want all the amenities. They want all the... Uh, everything that comes with it. They just want to go back to the 1950s. This is something I've harped on before. All the 50s were was our fleeting reward for killing Germans and Italians en masse. That's all it was. That's all it'll ever be. You know, acceleration is an ugly business. I might not make it. My family might not make it. But I have to believe that there would be members of our race who will thrive in such a scenario. Of course, I think it's a little uh, ill-advised to be over, overly accelerationist. It seems like some people, as Pat said, just want to see destruction and chaos for chaos' sake. I think this is short-sighted. You do have to have a plan afterwards. And going... I know I'm jumping around a lot here. But you think about it, accelerationism, really it's the only way forward. It's the only way, you know, the Nietzschean concept of the overman who rises above all odds to create a new being. Our ancestors, nothing was certain for them. Uncertainty abound. We need to get used to this. Our ancestors were superior. And we need that vital barbarism to show itself again. Because we are stagnant right now. In fact, we are going backwards, regressing. And as far as America goes, I do still think that balkanization really is our people's best option going forward. We should hope for it. We should hope absolutely for the downfall of the current regime. And I know accelerationism is ugly business. Very ugly business. But I can't help believe that the true Aryans, the Aryans, as Dringer said, that are Aryan in body, mind, and spirit, I have to believe that they will rise up. This is why I'm in favor of accelerationism. The great filter, you could say. And I mean by accelerationism, some sort of catastrophic sort of event. Um, what we're seeing right now is this just grinding down of everything that makes our people what they are. Through propaganda, education, indoctrination, I should say. And America leads the way for this. And just because I am anti-American and that I hate our government doesn't mean that I look elsewhere to China or Russia or who the fuck ever. They're not our people either. And I don't think they would uh, take kindly to us if something was to ever happen and they try to, uh, you know, build influence or whatever over here in this continent. I don't think they would take kindly to us in the least. So you have to be careful with worshiping authority for authority's sake. I don't think you should do it at all. Authority, like I said in that last video, should only be given to people who deem themselves worthy of it. And right now, in these spheres, I don't think anyone has. And I don't think any sort of leader will present themselves. You know, it's this artificial sort of hierarchy we see. Follow whoever has the loudest big bullhorn, uh, the hottest takes, or, you know, the uh, biggest following. 
That's what it seems to be, you know. It's an artificial hierarchy in a way. No leader will present themselves until things deteriorate. There will be no political solution until things accelerate and deteriorate. Just depends with which uh, sort of severity that these things occur, I suppose. But yeah, I have extremely mixed feelings about Ameriqua. You could say that I hate Ameriqua, that I have a disdain for it. Perhaps I do. But then again, it's all I know. It's a love-hate sort of relationship. It's not necessarily Ameriqua that I love. I love Appalachia. This is where I was born. And I'll be chucked in a ditch somewhere here one of these days. That's why I focus more on regionalism and localism. You know, I wish all of you, I wish all of you that are watching this, whatever part of this country you are in, I wish you well. Whichever part of the world, if you are in Europe, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, wherever, I wish you well. And I truly hope to see you succeed. But for myself, I focus on my immediate area, my immediate surroundings, and that is Appalachia. As Pat says, he wears Appalachia on his back, and so do we. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.